Good morning, everyone. Yes, we uh, don't need a disclaimer, but please make this practice your own. Don't get hurt. Don't do anything that will compromise your own um, health and longevity. <laughs> Good morning, welcome to Mindful Monday. It's so nice to be here with you all, even though we are um, not really interacting. I see your names and um, I'm so happy to be here with you. It is, someone said it's a good way to start the week. It really is a good way to start the week. And I'd like to dedicate this practice to my friend who invited me to, uh, invited uh, my husband and I to dinner last night and we got into this great conversation. Um, she actually invited her uh, young neighbor who's going to Trinity College over in Ireland and he's a philosophy major. <laughs> so we got into a really good conversation about philosophy and spiritual practice and religion and theology and I was like, my husband was like, let's get out of here, and I was in my element. I loved it, so it was great. So I'm grateful to her. But um, one thing she mentioned was that she feels like she's um, lacking a spiritual practice right now because um, of everything that's going on. So I'd like to dedicate this to her and offer some suggestions for kind of revving it back up. I think um, we do a good job here of... Um, creating space in our lives for spiritual practice. And yoga is uh, at least 2,500-year-old practice of body, mind, spirit. And um, it really does, for me, offer up a way to um, create a soft place for my soul to land and reside and um, just by releasing tension in the body and um, bringing my awareness to my breath and um, creating some focus and intention. So let's start with that. We'll start with a little bit of an intention. Um, and actually, we'll start with a body prayer. Let's start with a body prayer. We've practiced this before, maybe once or twice. Um, it's a body prayer from the tradition of Julian of Norwich, a 14th century mystic who survived a pandemic, and she got really sick and had some visions um, and believed that God came to her and um, showed her some things, and she called them her showings. And one of them was that um, she was shown a hazelnut, and within this hazelnut lies all the secrets of creation. And there's just some beautiful writings. Um, and she was actually the first woman to ever be published. So bravo, Julian. So this um, body prayer is attributed to her, her uh, I don't know if it was directly from her, but um, the group, she was an, uh, an anchoress in um, a hermitage. And so um, some of her students um, may have created this, or maybe she did. We just don't know. We don't know. Anyway, find your yogi posture. Sit up nice and tall. Just notice your breath. Notice your body. Invite your soul come into this body, into this present moment. And you might keep your eyes open for the first couple of times and I can, I can guide you through this body prayer. And it goes like this. We await, we await the presence of our soul, of God, whatever you choose, we await. Extending our arms forward, palms face up. And we reach our arms up, maybe we look up, we open our hands and we allow. We allow it to settle in, to come, to be with us. And then we draw our hands over our heart, take our chin to our chest, familiar um, bow of reverence, and we accept. We accept it into ourselves, our lives, our day. 
And after all of that, we attend. So it's all A's, so easy to remember. We attend to it. So that means we take it out into the world. Maybe we, we extend our arms out to the side. We maybe turn from side to side. And just imagine that we're taking this out into the world, making the world a better place with our presence. So we await, we allow, we accept, and we attend. Await, allow, accept, and attend. So let's just settle back in. And we'll take this three times silently to ourselves. You can follow along with me or close your eyes. And when that seems complete to you, take your time with it. But when it seems complete, just allow your eyes to close. Feel your sit bones grounding into the earth. And just take a moment. And then take your palms together in prayer right at your heart, Anjali Mudra. Maybe take that bow of reverence and create an intention for this practice. So the intention can be a prayer. Good. Whatever it is you need, you desire. If it didn't come up, maybe it'll come up during the practice. Just accept it. And then when you're ready, blink your eyes open. Let's come together into this present moment. Let's switch the cross of our legs, if your legs are crossed. Sit up nice and tall again, reach up, inhale, let your palms come together, draw them down to your heart, chin to your chest, exhale. Two more, inhale, reach up, exhale, chin to chest, hands to heart. Third time's a charm, reach up, and bow. Good, let's take the hands just to rest on the legs and take some gentle circles Maybe drawing a circle with your nose in front of you. Just checking in with the neck. And go in the opposite direction. Circles can be big or small. Good. And maybe you make your circle a little bit bigger. Maybe you turn your head to one side. Testing out that mobility in the neck. Good. A couple more. And then come forward, take your hands in front. Let's just take some seated cat cows, work out the spine, drawing the shoulders back as we lift our gaze and shine our heart. And then exhale as you round forward, drawing your belly into your spine, chin to your chest. A few more. And just warming up. Moving with the breath. Getting used to what it feels like to invite in a deeper breath that coincides with our movement. So uniting that external breath with the internal. couple more, just moving slowly or quickly, whatever feels right for you. And then come up to sit tall and release your legs from their bondage. Just take your feet to the floor, give your ankles a little massage, and take your hands behind you. Palms can face 
toward you or sideways or away, whatever feels right, and just windshield washer those legs, get the hips worked out. Nice little workout for the hips. Good. And then we'll come up to our tabletop, our familiar tabletop, with a blanket under your knees. Uh-oh. Make sure the blanket doesn't have creases or wrinkles like mine does. Get it all nice and smooth. And then take your hands under your shoulders, fingers spread wide, Sophie, shake it out. And then come to stillness here in your um, table top pose and take your gaze just slightly forward of the front of your mat so you have a nice long neck and then notice what's going on with your belly see if you can draw it into your spine see if you can make a table that a cup of tea could sit on not too hot so just in case you spill it and then take your left leg back behind you and point your toes down toward the floor feel your leg get engaged and then for just a moment take your toes and point Point them toward the left and then down toward the floor, maybe toward the left again, down toward the floor, just giving that hip a little morning hello. And then we'll gracefully take our right hand off our mat and send it forward and come into bird dog. So a little bit of a balance challenge here. If it feels good, stay. If not, lower your hand. If it feels good and you want to take it one step further bend your knee and then take your right hand reach back for your ankle and see if you can give yourself a shoulder opener and a quadricep stretch good and just notice how this feels if this is too much come back through your bird dog or lower your knee When you're ready, right hand comes back to the floor. Lower your left foot to the floor. Just rock forward and back, stretching that calf. And then see if you can pause here, sending the heel back um, toward, toward the back of your mat. Just getting a nice stretch. And then if this is not too much for your right knee, take that leg, lift it again, and take it over and across. And then take your gaze back towards your uh, left leg. It gets really confusing, <laughs> right and left, when they're on the side that they aren't usually good. So a stretch in your side body. I feel it. And if this is okay with you, go ahead and lift your leg back up one more time and send it over to the left. So keeping the leg lifted, flexing the foot, then lower it down toward the left and take your toes so they're pointed to the right. And come on up, reach your arms up, nice and uh, tall. And then take your left hand to this left leg and lean over to the left. Yeah, and just smile. Side stretch on the right. Good big breath in. And on your exhale, take your right hand down to your right side, so it's gonna be off your mat. And then go ahead and lift this left leg up. Good morning to this hip. <clears throat> maybe reach your left arm up, maybe flex your toe, good, and this is the last thing if your right knee is starting to uh, talk to you, see, see if you can reach back for your ankle here and draw that heel towards your hip, open up the left shoulder, good, nice big breath in, and a soft exhalation as we slowly Release that left foot. Take your left hand to the mat, take your right hand to the mat, and gracefully lower your left knee to the mat. Bring your knees wide, sink your hips back, come into a restful child's pose. Gee, that was a long little sequence. Let's see if we can remember what it was on the right. Good, sink those hips back, walk your fingertips forward, get some nice Stretch in the arms and the shoulders and the upper back and your child's. Good. And then just let your hands rest. Let's take one more breathe. One more breathe. One more breath into the back body. 
Good, let it go. Good. Slowly rise back up, come into your table. Let's take it to the other side. Hands under the shoulders, fingers spread, pressing into all those joints of the fingers. So good for the, the blood flow there and our, our circulation in our joints, which is so important. So find your bird dog here, just lifting your right leg to start, and then just turn that right ankle, right and left, little rotation in that right hip. Good. And then if you're feeling steady, Lift your left hand, take your gaze just forward of your mat so you have a, uh, reach your left hand and keep that neck nice and uh, long. Good, so your gaze is just in front of you. Maybe flex that left foot. Good, enjoying that activation of the glute on the right side, are we? Yes, we are, good. And when you're ready, flip that palm on the left, maybe decide if you want to reach back for uh, the right ankle. Enjoy a quad stretch, maybe a little opening of that left shoulder, a little balance. It's all the things, right? Good. Keep that breath smooth and steady. Good. And then we'll slowly release it back. Good. Maybe extend the arm again. Good. Maybe you can lower your left arm. Just decide what works for you. And then take that foot across the body and take your gaze towards your left shoulder and gander back toward your toes. Good. Nice big breath in. And on your exhalation, we'll come back. We'll take this right foot out to the right. So it's going to be off your mat again. And you can stay here. Or perhaps you come on up, rise up. Good. So that right leg is extended out from your right side and the toes are pointing forward. Good. Maybe even look up if you want to challenge your balance. And then take your right hand down that right leg and lean over toward the right. Second little side bend here. Maybe look under your left shoulder. Breathe in. Breathe out. And then take that left hand down to the floor. You can point your fingers forward and decide maybe you want to lift this right leg up. Maybe the right hand also lifts up. Good. Steady as she goes. And then reach back for the foot. Draw the heel toward your glute. Maybe look up. Steady, steady, breath easy. We've got this, one more breath in. And try not to ricochet it out. There is that temptation, right? We're gonna bring the right hand down to the mat, left hand down to the mat, extend that right leg, and then bring the right knee down. This time, child's pose, knees will come together and sink your hips back and release your hands back to the outsides of the feet Lower your forehead down to the mat and just bow forward. Take a rest. Good. We're already, already stimulated, already feeling that heartbeat. Maybe a little warmth in the back body. So good. What is your intention? What is your prayer? It can be so simple. When you're ready, blink open your eyes, press yourself back up, take your hands a little forward of your table, tuck your toes, and gently lift your hips all the way up. Come into your first downward facing dog. Move that blanket out of the way and walk your dog. Just bending one knee and then the other. And decide if you want to get funky with it. Make it your own. So this yoga practice can be whatever you need it to be, right? Whatever you need. Every day is a little bit different. So maybe you walk your dog a little bit differently today. Take a different route. I think Sophie heard me 
I'm not walking yet. Good. Find stillness, though, eventually. Send your hips up high. And then look forward. Come up on your toes and take a gentle walk forward to the front of your mat. Adjust your shirt. <laughs> and then just let your head hang in your forward fold, however feels good for you. So make it your own again. Shake your head out. Yes and no. Maybe bend your knees. Maybe hands come to ragdoll. Breathe in and breathe out. And if you're comfortable here with your head below your heart, so good for you, but it's not for everyone. You can always come up halfway if it's not working, finding that half table. But if you're comfortable, take your right hand to the outside of your left leg. Sweep your left arm up. Take a twist. Breathe in, twisting from that thoracic spine, that center of the back. And then as you exhale, slowly lower that down and switch sides. So left hand comes to the uh, right ankle, lift the right arm up. Good. And then slowly release your fingertips to the floor. We're going to bend our knees, bring our belly to our thighs, and then slowly roll up. Just one little bit at a time. Try to come up as slow as you can. And then take your palms, reach them up toward the sky, reach up, look up, and draw your hands down through the center, right into Anjali Mudra, to that mudra of prayer. Let your shoulders drop down away from your ears, and just pause here. Take a full breath in, and a long exhalation. Good. And then release your hands so your palms are facing forward. We'll come into mountain pose here. And with mountain pose, let's take a few shoulder rolls just to make sure we're creating enough space between our head and our shoulders. And draw those shoulders down and back and squeeze the shoulder blades together just ever so slightly. Activate them. But then at the same time, there's this contrasting gentleness to our face, our um, a softness. So we, it's a contrast. <laughs> We're bringing together the opposites in yoga, right? <clears throat> so see if you can be soft and yet active. So your gaze is forward. Your chin is tucked parallel with the earth. So we have this active attention to everything that's going on within us and yet a softness, a flexibility. We don't know what's next, but we trust that it'll be something good for us. So let's sink down into a chair pose, reach our arms up, draw the, the pinkies toward one another. Maybe sink down a little bit more. Good, maybe a little bit more since our glutes are fired up. If we sink down a little bit more, maybe we can sink our weight into our heels a little bit. Good. And when the breath starts to get choppy, bring your awareness to it. Keep those knees facing forward. Take one more big breath in. And on your exhalation, hands come to prayer right at the heart. Press those hands together. Create some resistance by using the strength of your arms to press your palms together. And then keep all your, your focus Keep all your focus somewhere in the center of your body so that you have this stability and bring your weight to your left leg. You can feel it. Gently pick up this right leg and just step it back. Step it all the way back. Come into a runner's lunge. Good. It takes a lot of strength and tenacity and grace. So if you fell out, you're not the only one, I, I'm sure. So then come forward. Lean forward and take your right elbow and see if you can hook it on your left thigh. We'll come into a prayer twist here. So keep some um, activation in that white, right, that white, the right quadricep. Good. Keep pressing that right heel back, left knee over left ankle. Wobbling is what I'm doing, so it's completely normal. Maybe you're really graceful and still, well, I'm not, so that's okay. If you want to take one last 
um, reach for the stars. Send your left arm up and your right arm down. Come into a little bit more of this. Or flip your palm and take your left arm behind your back for a half bind. That's always an option, right? Good. Take one more breath in, steady as she goes. Bring your hands back to prayer and then take your hands. Frame the left foot. Go ahead, lower the right knee. Lower the top of the right foot. That should feel pretty good. And then sink your hips back, your left glute back, and lift your toes. Come up on your fingertips or blocks. Always blocks are an option. And then send that right heel forward a little bit more. Lift and shine your heart and look forward. And on your exhalation, slowly bow. So the stretch is in the hamstring. I'm sure you know. Good. Breathe in. Breathe out. And then gently lift up. Bring that foot back. Coming into your low lunge, tuck your right toe. Lift on up. And we're going to rotate around to the right. So we're going to take our toes so they're um, facing forward on your mat. And we are... um, Our legs are almost as wide as our mat, but not quite. Just find that place where it feels good for you. And then come up to your halfway lift here. Fingertips on the floor. Good. We're going to bend the right knee and bring our hands over to the right. Only as much as feels right for you. And then slowly walk your way over to the left. Bend your left knee. We'll take a couple more here. Just opening up the inner thighs in preparation for a really good yin stretch later, so there's a method to our madness. Good. And then come back to center. Find your um, halfway lift. Again, fingertips on the floor. Bring your hands to your hips and slowly rise on up. Good. Let's take one pass through star pose. Take up space. Spread your fingers nice and wide. And then flip your palms, take them back behind you, clasp your hands together. We'll take one more forward fold here. Good. Lifting the arms overhead, if that feels okay. Relaxing the back of the neck and breathing slow. Good. Keeping that weight um, in all four sides of the feet. So the, uh, think, think outsides, outside edges of the feet also taking taking responsibility for this this strange shape. (laughs) When you're ready, fingertips come back to the earth, come up to your halfway lift, and we're going to take ourselves over to the right. So take your right toes, point them forward, come into your low lunge here. Good. Breathe in and breathe out. We're going to take our, um, our twist from here. So bring, bring yourself up and bring your hands to heart center. Come into Anjali Mudra. Press your palms together and take your left elbow to your right leg and twist. Good. Enjoy this twist. Enjoy the wobble. Maybe open up your wings. Stretching your shoulders, maybe flip your palm and take it around back behind your back for a little more of a shoulder opener. Good. Breathe in. Breathe out. Good. Right knee over right ankle. And then slowly we'll come back down to our low lunge. Lower that left knee. That should feel a nice relief, maybe a nice exhale as you do. And take the hip back and lift the right toes. Inhale as you shine your heart, lift and lengthen. And then exhale, fold on over this right leg. Stretch in the hamstring, bring that right hip back so it's somewhat level with the left. Good job. Breathe in. And exhale it out. When you're ready, come back forward. 
into your low lunge. Tuck your left toes. We're going to take a walk back through our, um, our star pose. We're going to bring our feet to the floor. I'm sorry, feet wide as our mat, toes pointing forward. Just take a few uh, knee bends here. You can walk from right to left. Good. And come back through center. Maybe lower your head toward the floor. Shake it out, yes and no. And then when you're ready, rise on up. Come into star, take up space, spread your fingers. Maybe look up, challenge your balance, draw your shoulder blades toward one another, and then take your hands back behind you, clasp them, and we'll take a forward fold. You can lift your arms up high. You can clasp them the funky way. I should have said that. That gives us a little brain tease. Take a breath in and a breath out. And then bring your hands to the floor or your waist. Come up halfway. And then we're going to shift on over, bringing ourselves back to the left side. Good. Take your hands to the floor. Step your left foot back to meet your right. Maybe rock forward a couple of times, enjoying your plank. Maybe lower down. Knees can come to the floor. Tops of the feet can come to the floor. And slowly make your way all the way down to your belly and just make a little pillow. And we'll take a moment here to just rest. So if you shake the hips out, right and left. Turn your head to one side. Good. Nice big breath in. And slow breath out. When you're ready, forehead comes to the front of the mat. Take your hands to the outsides of your shoulders and tuck those wings in. So bring your elbows in toward the side and then loop those shoulders back. So you're squeezing your shoulder blades together and then press yourself up into a cobra. Good. A little compression for the lower back. Only go as far as you are ready. Or maybe you want to come up a little further today. A little back bend so good for us. Unless you have injuries, you know. You know your body. Lower yourself down on your exhalation. We're going to take two more. Just work with what you got. So maybe lift up a little higher. Maybe not. And on your exhalation, lower back down. Shake it out. Last one. So here we have the opportunity to decide if we want to come into an up dog. So use the strength of your arms to press yourself up. If you want to try an up dog, lift your knees off the floor, but keep your shoulders down and away. Take a moment here. It's a big stretch. And then slowly lower your knees, lower your body, make a pillow, turn your head opposite direction. Sophie, shake it out. Nice. Big breath in. Long breath out. Good. So we want to counter that back bend. So bring your forehead to the floor again. We'll come up as, as we did before, as though we're coming through a cobra pose. But come on up through your tabletop. And let's take three cat cows here. Inhaling as we come into our cow pose. And then exhale, draw your belly to your spine as you round. Good, move slowly. Work out the kinks. You know what your body needs. Perhaps you know now your intention is clear. Your prayer is clear. What is it? And then when you're ready, we'll come back through center and bring ourselves down just to one glute or the other. We're going to bring our legs wide on our mat. So just as we were in... Um, well, not exactly, but we stretched our inner thighs, so hopefully we're ready for this. And then take any props that might be helpful for you to come into your wide-legged forward fold. So sometimes it's nice to have 
all kinds of stackage. So you can stack your blanket on top of your blocks and then adjust them and yourself so that you can come into um, this pose with the integrity that your body is asking of you. So you might start up here. You might be ready to lower your forehead down to your stack. Or maybe you're feeling like Gumby and you are just ready to come all the way down to the floor. So decide what's right for you and then find a place where you can be with your breath. And we'll just be here together, only apart. <laughs> so in this pose, if you like, you can flex your toes toward the ceiling or you can decide not to. Make it your own. Make it your own. And just bring your awareness to your breath. And notice where you might be holding on, resisting. See if you can kind of soften here. And keeping that alertness, that awareness of the breath at the same time. Good. So there are some people that come to this yoga practice and they want to be told just what to do. And then there's others that might want a little bit more freedom to express themselves. Whatever is right for you, you know. You can make these poses your own. And just like when you're making soup, some people like a little of this, and some people like a little of that, and some people just want to know exactly what to put in the soup. <laughs> That's my daughter. She's, been with, she's only with me for another week before they hopefully go back to work and um, she likes to know what the what the recipe is she wants to know exactly what what ingredients and half the time I don't measure and <sighs> yeah and sometimes it's good to follow a recipe Keep that breath moving smooth and slow. So there is a practice of um, writing your own prayer, your own collect. Um, in the, the church, they call it a collect. I guess it means like a collection of thoughts. And that's really what prayer is, right? Just a collection of our longings, our thoughts. Our, and um, Pedro O'Toole, the poet, um, he describes um, this method for creating your own collect. And I really like it um, because you don't have to be necessarily writing a prayer to God, um, but I mean, ultimately, I think that's what we are doing <laughs> regardless. But um, if you've lost someone, um, you can write that prayer to them. Um, he even suggests we can write a, uh, our collect to uh, the pandemic because we're all pretty pissed off at that pandemic right now. So I thought that was kind of a cool idea. So the method has five parts, and they don't all start with A, so I'll, I'll put this on the video. So if you want to come back and um, visit it, revisit it, if you want to try writing your own collect. So the first step is to just name, name the person, the name who, to whom you are praying, so God. So, so Julian of Norwich, 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 um, thought of God more as a mother. So you might say, loving mother of all. Um, 
and then say one thing about that that being that entity that thing that you are praying so you might use the word loving um, and then you might say something like you are comfort peace nourishment to me um, so that so name name who you, whom you are praying to name um, something about that being entity energy and then name your request what is your intention what is your prayer what is your request so you might say grant me the awareness of your presence this day so you name to whom you are praying say one thing about that being name your request and then say more about the request that you're asking for so what is it why are you asking so maybe it's uh, grant me the awareness of your presence that I may be soft and receptive and fed this day and then you want to end with some form of praise so some people like to say amen you can say some form of gratitude in the Christian faith we, faith we say through Jesus Christ our Lord you can choose your ending and so it's pretty simple you can write your own collect if you decide to do it I'd love it if you would share it it would be very cool So let's take three more breaths here together. Softening wherever you can. Allowing yourself to just surrender to this shape. Breathing into those nooks and crannies where you may not have felt breath for a while so like make this last breath your deepest really deep and full and then we'll slowly make our way out we've been here for quite a while long enough for me to blabber on so come on up remove your props if you have them there and then take the outsides of your legs and manually bring them on up Good. <clears throat> and then we're going to come on down to our backs. So if you like, um, if you have a block, bring it on with you. And come on down. Good. We'll take our right knee into our chest. Just hug it in. Take a couple ankle circles here. Good. Extend that leg long. Just feel that sensation of length that we've created. Hug the left knee in, take some ankle circles. Good. Go both, both ways. And then extend that leg long. Let's take one full body stretch and create a little arc in the lower back. So really um, lift your lower back off the floor. Just give yourself that stretch. Take a full breath and really stretch long. Point your toes. And then on your exhalation, draw those knees into your spine, into your spine, into your belly. And then lower your feet to the floor. Take your block. If you don't have a block, no worries. If you do, tuck it right under your sacrum. We'll come into a supported bridge. If you don't have your block, you know what to do. Reach for your hands, snuggle your shoulders, lift on up into your bridge. You might not want to stay as long as our friends who have our blocks. And your block can be on either level. If you feel like you're ready for a little more of a back bend, you can take it to the medium level or the lower level. And then snuggle your shoulders. And we'll just breathe here. And if you are um, blockless, you can lower yourself down. You can um, come, come up a couple of times and just give yourself that spinal workout and eventually we'll lower down if you have your block keep it there and then lift your legs on up overhead stretch out those legs 
You can point and flex a couple of times, letting your legs be above your heart. So good for us. Let's take three breaths here. This can also be a great Shavasana if your legs can be up a wall. And you might decide if you have a wall that's empty that you that's how you want to spend your time in Shavasana. But as we prepare for that, just bend your knees, take your feet to the floor, lift your hips, remove your block if it's there, and then lower them down, come all the way down. Take your feet to the floor, bump your hips to the right just a couple inches, and take your knees over to the left. Try not to roll on my mic pack. And then open up this right arm, maybe take your gaze in that general direction. Find your twist. Twisting from the waist, wringing out. Good. We'll take one more breath here. And then exhale as you release those knees back up to the sky. Take your hips over to the left side of your mat and lower your knees over to the right. Open up that left arm. Turn your gaze in that direction. Good. Let your breath come slow and easy. A couple more times, just inviting in that deeper breath. Filling up. And slowly letting go. Good. One more breath in. And on your exhalation, come on back to center. Let your spine uh, neutralize. So set yourself up. And then release your legs. Make them wide. Bring them wide on your mat. And take your your uh, blanket and place it anywhere that you might need comfort. Thinking about that comfort today. Maybe place it under your neck. That's a really nice place for it. And then let your palms be receptive, open. Maybe snuggle your shoulders underneath you. Find that place of repose and just be. We've come this far. Let's, let's take our, our just rewards, accepting, allowing, being. And a summer would not be complete without reading Mary Oliver's The Summer Day. Who made the world? Who made the swan and the black bear? Who made the grasshopper? This grasshopper, I mean the one who has flung herself out of the grass, the one who is eating sugar out of my hand, who is moving her jaws back and forth instead of up and down, who is gazing around with her enormous and complicated eyes. Now she lifts her pale forearms and thoroughly washes her face. Now she snaps her wings open and floats away. I don't know exactly what a prayer is. I do know how to pay attention how to fall down into the grass, how to kneel down in the grass, how to be idle and blessed, 
how to stroll through the fields, which is what I've been doing all day. Tell me, what else should I have done? Doesn't everything die at last and too soon? Tell me, what is it you plan to do with your one wild and precious life? And slowly begin to deepen the breath. Bring small movements to fingers and toes, turning your head from side to side again. Maybe taking a moment to roll to one side and revisiting your intention for your practice or your prayer. And then if you'd like to join me, always the option to stay where you are. If you'd like to come up to a comfortable seat, just come on up so you can notice. Maybe there's more openness in the hips. Maybe there's a little more spaciousness, a little more softness. Nice soft place for your soul to land. And when you're ready, inhale, reach up for all the goodness. Exhale, send it down to your heart. One last Anjali Mudra here, a prayer pose. Take a moment to attend to this prayer. So sending out a prayer of goodness, love, peace to someone who could use it. I've had lots of prayer requests this week, so I know there are a lot of people out there that could use our prayers. Thank you for starting your week with me, for starting your new practice. Send me your collects if you decide to write them, and namaste. Have a good one. Thanks, Connie. Thanks. My favorite of many, many favorite Mary Oliver poems in my life. Isn't that the best? It's so good. I have it on my refrigerator. I, I printed it out.